Good afternoon, uh, good morning, and good evening to some of you. Uh, welcome to a Corbin Soft Webinars Presents webinar on SAFE, uh, entitled Crack the SAFE and Get on the Agile Release Train. My name is David Merrill. Um, I will be your guide through today, and um, I will uh, get started in just one moment. Thank you for joining. Okay, um, as I mentioned before, my name is David Merrill. I am the CTO and Principal Consultant at CorbinSoft. CorbinSoft is a Siemens Channel and NewWired partner, and today it's actually my, uh, my distinct honor to be joined by a former colleague of mine at Polarian, Yerji Valik who is the Vice President of Product Management at uh, New Wired. And he will be taking some of the time today to talk a little bit about the New Wired solution, and we're actually gonna see some of that today. Um, a few programming notes. The webinar today will be recorded and will be made available at CorbinSoft.com. You are invited to come visit our website and view the webinar later in whole or in part. I would also encourage you to use the Q&A panel in this GoToWebinar uh, application. Throughout the presentation, I will try to pause and see if there are specific questions that are being asked to make the webinar and the discussion today as interactive as possible. I'm also joined by some of my colleagues at CorbinSoft who will be, who will be available to um, answer any questions that you have during the meeting as well. If you have any uh, technical difficulties, they might be able to help you as well. So feel free as a participant to chat to those panelists. And as you'll see at the end, we certainly welcome your direct contact afterwards. The agenda today will be pretty brief, but it's going to be covering some really complex topics. I'm going to talk a little bit about what SAFE is and, and then launch into a more detailed discussion and overview of what, what I would consider practical SAFE. Um, SAFE, as we'll see, is a scaled agile framework for lean enterprises. And um, we'll discover this not just conceptually as part of the open project that has founded much of SAFE's architecture and uh, fueled the kind of implementation that we'll focus on with a case study of the Siemens LCS team. It's the team that makes um, Siemens product line, uh, product lifecycle management software and how they in turn adopted SAFE and used Polarian specifically for that adoption. And, and then we'll go directly into some very real world demonstration scenarios of using the safe concepts uh, together with Agile in the Polarian product. And as part of that, uh, you'll see this, uh, this new wired journey being used to help advise and assist new users to Polarian to get to important topics and procedures more quickly than if they had to, had to attend formal training. So after my close of the SAFE and um, Polarian discussion, I will um, hand over the baton to Yuji Valik, who will speak a little bit about New Wired and its technology. And then afterwards, um, we are free to um, handle any of your specific questions and answers in a dedicated session. But again, you're certainly welcome to ask those questions as we proceed. Um, you'll probably notice from my voice today that I get pretty excited about talking about Polarian. And in reality, not because of the software product, but because of the customers that we get to work with. What gets me up in the morning every day is really the stories behind some of the customers of Polarian who are doing the most technically challenged products and services um, in, in the world today. And this uh, ranges from software companies doing innovative um, artificial intelligent work. Um, it deals with companies bringing the most cutting edge technology to medical devices, to automotive, and to aerospace technology. So you can see here from a quick landscape, 
the broad array of customers who have used Polarian uh, deep into their product manufacturing process. Yet it's not just bounded by software only or mechanical or electrical only or mechatronics that brings all of them together. It really does represent a framework for truly developing um, your products and your services in the most efficient way. And, and, and so one of the things that's happened is, is Siemens and Polarian has really embraced SAFE as a concept and they are a scaled agile partner. They work closely with um, the teams developing these concepts and are a very early adopter of uh, the SAFE 4.0 and soon to be implemented 5.0 um, architecture within Polarian. I invite you to take a look at both the uh, the website for Scaled Agile Framework as well as what Polarian is doing with them actively. So one of the things that we've seen, um, of course, over time is that Agile software development has really grown in popularity and is driven through software development um, almost a business and an organizational approach to program management, to project management, um, and it's, it's moving quickly through quality assurance so that these quickly developed applications can be quickly tested with high amounts of quality and then quickly deployed. So that concept has really started to catch on throughout the non-software part of companies and customers. So these practitioners who are starting to implement SAFE are revealing that they see an enormous amount of productivity increases as well as the de a decrease in the cost or, or manifest also in the ability to go time to market with uh, the organization of some of these concepts beyond just software development. So we want to be able to show today how you can take advantage of some of those in a practical way. So we'll talk about the fundamentals, we'll talk about that use case, and, and really see in Polarian what you can do right now to begin implementing SAFE. Let me start with a, just a little bit of an introduction. Um, who am I and, and why am I here? Um, as the principal consultant uh, at CorbinSoft, I was also involved at Polarian prior to the Siemens acquisition. Um, and, and before then, I worked uh, as a solutions architect at the Semantic Corporation. My work history is almost always following the practical implementation of solutions. And at CorbinSoft, we want to make sure we can help you build the product better before you build it. And, um, and, and so in my perspective of working with not just one or two or even three companies. I have a wide array of experience that has led, led me to the kind of practices that help companies quickly take advantage of an ALM solution like Polarian to fill some of the gaps tactically and build a bridge um, strategically. I have here a phrase on this, uh, look, just look at my boots. Um, my grandfather was a farmer and he would judge a person based on his shoes. So if you walked in with very shiny Italian loafers, my grandfather would almost immediately classify you as someone who doesn't work with his hands or her hands. But if you walked in with farm boots or cowboy boots that were scuffed and muddy and ugly, he knew that you were actively involved in the trenches. So if I have uh, boots, virtual boots, it is muddied and scuffed with years of implementation of real world application of some of these concepts. So I'd like to think that uh, I've been an enabler for both early, early agile adoption and also really um, a, a hybrid of the best of agile together with other uh, methodologies like waterfall or V model practices. And in some ways, we at Polarian have been involved in, a, in an agile framework well before it ever had that particular nomenclature. So hopefully you'll be able to get a sense of that today. Much of what we're talking about began with an agile manifesto that boldly stated that it's individuals and working software, working product, over the formal process and tools. Um, instead of having a lot of detailed requirement documentation, we want working software. 
Um, instead of dealing with upfront negotiation and long terms, we want to collaborate directly with customers to shorten the cycle that a customer can have to see that working software and experience and feed into the development process. So what happens is the Agile Manifesto encourages us to respond quickly to change instead of waiting months to follow a plan. Um, one of the vice presidents at Polarian would, would often say that uh, before Polarian, someone would say, um, you know, do I have to wait six months before I see software I don't like? And he would say, no, you only have to wait two weeks to see software that you don't like. And of course, uh, by showing the good and the bad of that development process, we become nimble and responsive to that feedback and can start fixing problems before they become manifest and avoiding them outright. And, and so I think in large part, the scaled agile framework is bringing a higher level of material to this process. So it took what's really working well with agile success in the software development, but some of the things aren't necessarily well tended when you think about an agile team working in their own way to develop their own software in their own time. It sometimes misses some of the business focus and, and, and being able to provide um, projections for uh, time to market and success of an entire product line becomes much more complicated than just a group of successful software development teams. And, and that's really what uh, SAFE is designed to do, to bring some of these best practices to get real business results. So in order to do that, we have to change some of the rules and adopt some terminology that feeds into and benefits from those key agile software. So SAFE is a way to take some of these significant challenges that have always surrounded project failure and, and try to give a systematic solution to them to realize um, this kind of benefit in a short time. So the uh, several several organizations got together to build the scaled agile framework and you can see this publicly on scaledagileframework.com and it introduces four general modes. Um, one is called the essential safe, and that's a little bit closer to what I would say is practical safe, that's something you can get started with. And you can grow into a large solution safe concept um, where products can be entirely developed with the safe architecture. And then it might even grow beyond just an individual product to an entire product line that might be realized at the portfolio safe level. And, and what we see here in this image is really the, the full realization of safe across an entire enterprise in some ways from the highest organization, the, the most senior executives all the way down through those who are writing code and testing and delivering product. So I'm going to focus a little bit more on some of the basic findings of, of Essential Safe. And so this, uh, this information comes from the Gartner Group and it was very helpful in my own research into bring, you know, talking about this particular webinar um, because they saw that more people um, were growing their Safe or their EAF, uh, which is a a more generic term for an enterprise agile framework, year over year, that was starting to increase. There, there's still not a whole lot of um, complete coverage, but it seems like just about every organization is considering it or has started in some ways to develop this uh, this framework. So we want to follow that through, but in, in my mind, I'm less concerned what the Gartner Group says companies should do than I am necessarily about what one customer, one company needs to do, how they have evaluated these concepts in an agile framework and how they choose to use it. Um, and uh, what we certainly see is that um, there are some pretty heavy training requirements. We have to be able to not just train development teams in using 
agile uh, software development, but we have to train marketing teams. We have to train uh, management teams. We have to train executive teams in how to adopt these concepts. And, and so they came out with some very strong recommendations. And um, I'm going to focus mostly on, on some of these later two here, because if we go towards all the things that the, that the Gartner Group suggests we should do to be successful with a safe implementation, one of the things they come off with is now we need to invest time in building competent scrum teams. And, and before you can scale agile to the entire enterprise, we want to be successful at the team level. And, and with that, we can use key practices to be able to establish consistency across some of these teams. And, and, and this is a really important element from some of my own personal observations because occasionally I'll walk into a customer and I'll see something like this. And, and this is a, a very real picture of somebody building um, a, a programming board. And I've actually walked into some customer sites or prospect sites, and the hallways have been wallpapered with post-it notes and tape and yarn and thumbtacks. And as you turn one corner and go down another hallway, it seems like their entire release structure is laid out on the wall. And as I, as I see that, I start to think immediately, well, you know, what happens when a, a stakeholder isn't in the building here? And, and in fact, sometimes I would turn a corner and I would see an entirely different structured way of addressing a different product line with different colors and different practices. And, and as you can kind of see by this picture, it can become confusing and it has to be observed by a person. So, um, when we look at a lot of growing customers, larger enterprises, everybody is by definition global. I also thought what would happen if the fire sprinklers would go on and suddenly, or, 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 or a fan would blow and everything just simply fell off the wall. How do you put it? All meeting or malicious, answering these questions of what changed and did the right person change and who did, who was it and what did they do? it becomes very untenable. If you considered some of the things that have happened in the past few months worldwide, the new normal, we have left the building behind. And, and I think really that's going to introduce this need to see um, a software tool like Polarian ALM to become the digital twin, and, and that's an important uh, industry and Siemens concept, of the entire product release train. And and it might be small from a s small piece of software all the way through an entire product line. So Polarian allows you to collaborate to those teams who are ready to go to safe. It provides a single source of truth for all of the product development activities from ideation all the way through to delivery and final documentation. But along the way, there's a high level of business reviewer capability. So the managers, the marketing teams, the executives can watch the underlying activity of Polarian lead up through these team-based agile facilitation into information and decisions that become very quantifiable for them. And so the agile release train um, that is part of the safe concept is something that begins at that fundamental level and, and, and really moves through the entire enterprise. So I, I thought it would be really a good idea to talk about this experience within Siemens of the, the team creating PLM software. And they had determined that they did want to work with SAFE uh, it, within the PLM structure, the software, the, the digital industry solutions group. And, and so they built a roadmap and then they selected and found that training was very important, a key component, and then they used Polarian to chart the path of their growth from the beginning of those Agile teams through the rest of, of, of their, um, their product development team structure. And so as you can see in this example, they've grown very quickly and already have completely implemented their version of SAFE within their organization. And it, it might be a safe thing to say that in some ways, um, 
LCS's version of SAFE might be a little bit different than some of the SAFE structures that we'll be seeing today. And in fact, um, we'll actually talk a little bit about the different changes that can happen in, in an individual company's perspective so that you could tailor your own concept of SAFE to match your, your best process. But as you can see, they're ramped up and extending um, extending the safe concept to the entire portfolio to the entire enterprise and and so i i also uh, found it um interesting so i'm i, I mentioned before that i'm in, excited to to talk to yuji valik again because our history goes back to the very early days of polarian and one of the things that i was most impressed with while at polarian is that the development team building Polarian, used Polarian to develop Polarian. And, and I'm very pleased as a, as a partner to see that same trend and practice continuing at Siemens and how well Siemens has adopted Polarian for their, for their own development processes. So as we look at the entire safe model that is provided from the scaled agile framework on the left, we can see that in order to be successful, we have to grow in linking and traceability throughout all of the items. So from a story to a feature to a capability to an epic, these are all key terms that have to be understood and modeled in Polarian in a way that from the bottom we can always look up and from the top we can always look down through all of the activity. Well, they were able to establish some metrics, and so I think it, it certainly lends some good credibility to see how many people are using the, the safe structure within, within Siemens today. It's not just one small team. It's a fundamental part of their business. And, and all along, some of the key things that they're starting to learn is instrumental to ALM in general. How do we define what is done? Um, how can we move quickly from finishing the development designs to code review to builds and tests into the deployment? And uh, for some systems, deployment into the software world is, a sim is maybe as transparent as moving software into a server or into a host organization. Sometimes it's deploying to handheld and mobile devices. Sometimes it's flashing code onto smaller microcontrollers or other computers that have dedicated functionality. And all along through all of this process, it's, a, it's key to see how these safe concepts are being adopted throughout. Okay, well, let, let's talk a little bit more about the Polarian fundamentals that support this. So one key aspect to Polarian is allowing all stakeholders to collaborate in a way that um, their user roles and permissions are all managed and they can see the right information always at the right time. Not duplicating, but transparently viewing the content and being able to reuse common data in a way that makes the information that they're viewing also more efficient. So we'll see the inclusion of ideation control, the introduction of classic requirements used together, <clears throat> together with the creation of epics and user stories in a way that the two types of information link well together and all of the stakeholders managing both pieces of uh, both areas of information collaborate on a, on a daily basis, if not a continuous basis. Now, we're going to go a little bit more into the detail of how Polarian can accomplish this. And one of the key fundamental features inside Polarian is something called Live Docs. I'll refer to it as Polarian Documents as well. And it is a very important con concept to bring these agile and safe terms to the people who are non-programmers. So someone who is commonly looking at project plans, and spreadsheets and documents would sometimes get tripped up with some of the complex data rendering that's associated to SAFE and, and, and might get caught up in what an epic is and what a feature is. Well, what we can do in Polarian is to maintain a very easy to work with online document structure 
that takes as its content not just um, unstructured text, but actually organizes all of these objects into one location. And we'll see that in just a minute. Live documents aren't just a file, but they can be expressed as a Word file. They can be sent out to a customer to review as a Microsoft Word file. They can be created as a firm PDF file. And all of these will allow us to um, be able to see the feature set to connect the documents that d describe requirements with the activities that will plan the quality assurance and testing and ultimately wrap into the full life cycle of data to organize all of this work from the top all the way down into a, a full application life cycle con control and container. Well, I'd like to start off a little bit with, with an example here and um, in doing so, at the fundamental part of every Agile release train might be taking on the documentation that exists today. So I might really need to incept and import um, a Word document originally. I might want to make sure that that document can be simultaneously edited by a global constituency and then make sure that I can keep feeding that common information to other people to review and approve and ultimately leading to what might become a, a formally approved document that is as secure inside Polarian as it would be in a paper vault and as easy to access for all of its revision history as you might expect to see for current information. And so I'm actually going to bring up Polarian for just a moment and talk about some of these fundamentals. I've mentioned Polarian documents and work items and linking, and we'll see a little bit of that activity together with a new wire journey. What is essential to aspects of being able to build um, a, a safe infrastructure is easy adoption. So inside this Polarian interface, as you see on the left-hand side, this is the navigation for one particular project where I'm developing some software that might be characterized as software as a medical device for an insurance company to track an application I've, I've fictitiously called my virtual doctor. And we want to know how do we go about creating a new a, a new document from an input. And if I don't remember, I can tap into using my safe architect, uh, I'm sorry, using my new wire journey to show me the typical types of activities I might expect to have if I am actually creating a new document from a template. So using a new wire journey, it starts to advise me as a layer on top of my web interface to be able to come to a section where I'll actually load the document template. I'm going to load a a basic software specification, and, and then I'm gonna provide what my new name would be. So we'll call this uh, the virtual doctor uh, user authentication methods or specifications. Much like you would copy and paste a Word document, but because I have the new wired label to assist me, I can step through those common activities with none, if or really very little training. And so it advises me now that the document has been created. I, I might want to find it, locate it. And so inside my view here, <clears throat> um, I want to be able to locate that document that I've just created. Here's my virtual doctor user authentication specifications. And now I'll open that as a Polarian document. So I've left a dashboard that helps me organize this information. And then the journey is still walking me through what I need to be able to create my very first software requirement. And so doing so, I'll locate the locate, I'll locate where I want that software requirement to be. And, and then I can just simply start typing my text. And so here, I'll create my first requirement. Uh, the software shall, The, the actual information that I'm typing here isn't so important, but I'm just typing as easily as I am in a Word document. But now, instead of just keeping that as an unstructured sentence, I'm going to create a Polarian work item around it. 
And this Polarian work item is just the beginning because I can simply start authoring the next one and the next one and the next one, the software. And when I'm ready to save this, I, I now commit all of these changes to the Polarian repository. And even though I'm just one person, you know, talking and, and saving this document in one particular uh, uh, page, my expectation is as I'm doing this, everybody has access to the information. And, and many of us could be in this document making changes simultaneously. Additionally, as I go through and make other perhaps non-work item changes like establishing the purpose here, and it would be uh, uh, authentication. Uh, so I want to make sure that I'm going to satisfy HIPAA regulations. And eventually, if I was writing software that had to be compliant with specific regulatory specifications, I'd really be able to clarify that very clearly. And again, saving it just like you might do inside of a Word document, but I'm doing it all from a globally available Polarian server where quite literally my colleagues in Europe and in India can be accessing this information simultaneously. When I do save things inside Polarian, I will always trap the full history of every change that I ever make. So back to that earlier concept I talked about. While doing safe in Polarian, you will never have to wonder who did a change, what was that change, and, and when did that change happen. So each individual change here that I'm doing, perhaps in a very uh, simple and isolated manner, can always be both viewed and quickly compared, just like you might expect to see inside track changes in Microsoft Word. I now see it at a very deep elemental data level within Polarian. So this is an important concept that we'll see start to propagate throughout several other demonstration scenarios that we'll, be, that we'll see inside Polarian today. But what we've done is create a document, a word-like document structure. It fits inside of uh, the specific context of all of my other requirements and use needs and test documentation, and it's accessible to all. But it contains inside of it the same type of work items that we'll see focus and be part of the rest of the safe and agile structure. Combining then essentially my ability and need to show good documentation practices together with my need to be able to very quickly make changes and develop epics and user stories. One of the things that, that we'll also see here is on this page, you can see that I have some documents which are being collaborated on and I'm expecting to have some people make revisions and changes. You can see the difference between working documentation and I also have something called a collection. So if I really start to look at a collection of some of these documents as a companion to some of the activity that happens inside SAFE, then I will be able to easily have someone open up and review the user need document for the virtual doctor combined with any other of the related documentation. I don't have to search for them. I don't have to find their versions. They're all really carefully prepared inside this Polarian project. So I'm gonna leave this behind for just a minute and return back to um, the PowerPoint for just a minute because now, I want to build on top of this idea of some of those fundamental concepts. And, and that really is now putting aside, if you will, some of the structures of the Polarian document and really focusing on how projects in Polarian can work together. So we're gonna talk about building the Agile release train. And it's gonna start with how well you can take Polarian to immediately implement the, the safe methods that you'll see before. I quite literally downloaded um, the safe template from Siemens. I implemented it in my Polarian server, and what you'll see today is that template without any modification. So I could immediately start taking advantage of that structure for my safe implementation. However, 
not many companies are ready to, to do that right away. And we might have to mix the methodologies. So I really may have a waterfall process that governs the requirements documentation uh, for right now. And then we have an agile method to implement those software requirements with user stories. But then eventually I might grow out of the need to have very highly structured and reviewed and approved documentation, but have more of a program and portfolio epic to organize uh, other concepts that are part of the, of the SAFE method. So you can very much mix and match them together, not just within one particular Polarian server, but even within the project structure. So we've already reviewed this. I won't spend too much time into this, except to say that oftentimes, just like projects don't stand by themselves, certainly the kind of documentation that we've talked about does not necessarily stand by itself. And so system requirements might trace down to software design requirements, which might be verified by tests. And putting and tracing these work items together across all the documentation is, again, a very important part of reaching out to all the different methods that might be governing uh, that might be governing Polarian. So let's talk a little bit about what that project structure looks like inside uh, Polarian. So I'm going to open back my user interface, but I I'm going to put aside these two tabs that we were just looking at and open up and still, uh, instead one of the um, key methods, key, key aspects of, of the safe structure. Now over here on the right hand side in my Polarian view, you can see that I have not one project like the software as a medical device that we just looked at, but many projects working together to implement a multi-leveled implementation of SAFE. This is the portfolio. And at that portfolio level, I'll be able to define a different set of work items than we saw before. So we won't have user needs necessarily. We might not even have formal requirements. What we have are epics and capabilities and and solution increments and solution releases that are part of the, uh, the safe structure. These work items are tailor-made for the portfolio project that implements the highest level of, uh, of the, the safe structure. And, and if I wanted to, I could certainly move down and look at specific dashboards inside my portfolio. I think of this often as how to avoid attending the meeting that I have to prepare a PowerPoint slide for, rather than have to schedule that meeting and me to prepare that content, I would much rather have all the stakeholders see this all in process. This is the page that would really help those who are advising the development uh, on how well things are going forward. So we see portfolio epics and their progress. And maybe this would be also the beginning of making some changes to say, you know, I want to know when this particular item is going to be finished. So I might click on this item, I might open it in a new tab and see at a very detailed level the kind of data that feeds into this portfolio epic. So we have here custom fields which are defined inside this project structure. They show me documents that are part of this uh, portfolio epic. They have me estimating uh, the shirt size level of this particular epic and I'm rolling up um, a potential count of story points that tell me how much is going into implementing this very high level epic. Um, in addition to rich text descriptions, I can have very structured epic value statements as you see here so that in addition to the summary title, I can really adhere to some of those strict standards of how to consider epics and structures uh, for, for implementation within the SAFE architecture. Uh, any change here is similarly tracked in the same way that my document is tracked. I can assign it. I can move its status through, and maybe one of the choices that we would have is it's time to reject this item. Maybe we're not going to do this. We've reached a point of putting this in a longer backlog because we won't be implementing it within the time frame. 
or I might be ready to guarantee that all of the work has been done for this one. Now, in this particular case, that's not true. But these kinds of changes in activities would be what happens to the work item as a whole. And oftentimes it's very helpful to take a step back at the portfolio level and start to look at the impact of all of these items. And so with this view, I'm looking at what's called the tracker view in Polarian that brings together the traceability of work items inside of the portfolio tool, a portfolio project, and it's showing me how it is impacting the next layer, which is the program layer. So I'll see traceability links from work items in this project with work items in the program project. And I can actually see that all the way down through a specific user story and the specific tasks that were done to implement that part of the user story. So I really can zone down and report in, maybe even interact with uh, very low level items from this top uh, portfolio project. I'm crossing project boundaries by working together with those same projects that we saw earlier. And, and perhaps one of my efforts would be to come in and say, uh, uh, this needs to be reevaluated. You know, please open another task. Now, maybe I would want to go and, and have even a, a heavier detailed approach here. Maybe I'm just not going to create this task. Maybe I'm going to choose to, to, to recycle it back. We're going to reject this and we're going to say it's incomplete. And my expectation is now a new task is going to be created, perhaps linked to a, a different user story item. So that's the portfolio project. It sets up um, a more detailed approach to the whole Agile released train. And we can start to map those on different topics and pages throughout this Polarian project. Well, let's quickly move now to the program that starts a core look at the products being delivered. So this now is a program dashboard showing program epics. Work items inside this are much more tailored for the sprint activity that would happen throughout the, the system. I define epics and user stories and features. Um, these epics exist inside of a uh, Kanban board so I can move quickly through and advance their project process as I, as see, I see fit. And I can use these dashboards again to indicate what should be happening at the team level. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll go very quickly over some aspects of also the hierarchy, not at the portfolio level, but at the program level and start to see how individual features will be implemented. What are those user stories that I've created earlier and when and how will those user stories be, be executed? This is also an opportunity for us to see some key work items inside Polarian for tracking. One is that the defect. So I can have not just requirements and user stories in Polarian, but test cases. When the test cases are executed and they fail, I can create defects and those defects will help me make sure that I resolve all future issues, both those reported in the field and those found and resolved during the sprint process as a whole. But I'm most keenly interested in going down one more level to look at that team site. That's where so much of the work gets done. And so I could certainly follow one of these user stories into its specific project view, but I also have opened in another tab um, that Teams page. And inside this team page, you can see how I sit in the particular structure of my safe hierarchy. And maybe one of the things that I want to jump right to is to see those user stories in motion that we've just been looking at. And so I'll move right to Team Omega's active iteration. I'll call it a scrum uh, because that's how I've chose, uh, I've selected to build. And you can see my progress for something that just started a little while ago and I'm behind, I'm, I'm behind the, 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 the progress bar of what should be happening, but I'm now ready to start doing things like creating and moving some of these tasks. So I'll open a particular task and it's going to be actively worked and assigned. Um, 
as I move through the Polarian uh, views here in dragging, maybe I'll reject this one. Um, all of the rules for completing a work item in its workflow must be followed. Polarian maintains a very strong sense of the, the workflow engine that will guide both the work item completion as well as document completion. And so if I have to provide more detailed information um, at that Kanban board level, Polarian advises me through this process. So as I work, I will be able to take this user story and make sure that I can start marking it as being successfully uh, both readied and available and scored for all of my, my sprint activity. And ultimately, what I'd like to be able to see at um, an individual project level is all of the ongoing work, um, information about current releases, and then other activity associated to my, uh, my readiness for, for that particular piece. So this actually uh, introduces combining a, a third kind of project together with those which are formally safe. This is just an agile project, and all of, they, all of them coexist within Polarian and can be part of a total view which lets me see and link not just to one project in one particular product line, but to many across an entire server. So a single enterprise can implement all of their methods within a single Polarian uh, server instance. Well, um, let me come back and kind of recap some of the things that we looked at. We looked at the multi-team collaboration. We looked at how we can get started now with our current documents and practices, and, and we viewed at a, at a pretty close level the activity associated with um, a Scrum project. One of the things that I like to bring up is uh, the work with Polarian is not just about the software. I, I hope you've had a sense of that today. SAFE as an architecture is also not just about software development. It's about providing all of the good business practices that are necessary to make great software development matter. And this is especially true with those customers that do interface directly with other software systems. So it's not just them, but it's an interconnected system. And it's also very important when we start dealing with hardware and IoT devices and dependencies to the software subsystems that have to make things work. So that software development lifecycle is interconnected with business plans and regulatory standards, and all of them have to be maintained on a very tight and close cycle. So beyond this demonstration, what's possible? Well, you can start right now. Um, I have a mode of operation in Polarian that I refer to as a day zero implementation. You can start with Polarian immediately, and you can build your documentation into waterfall projects, into sprint teams, even while you're adopting and insinuating safe into your, your planning and your use in Polarian. You could structure with Polarian a faster adaptation to a safe architecture. We really want to be able to collaborate with all the expert stakeholders because they're not just in the software teams, they are consultants, they are auditors, they are <clears throat> temporary employees, they are directors and C-level executives that have key information to bring to bear at the right time. That kind of visibility and a single source of truth really encourages contribution and collaboration so that the best data is used in the earliest stages. I would invite you and challenge you to look at Polarian as a vehicle for bridging the complex concepts of SAFE into a very pragmatic approach within, within your company today, particularly because some of the difficulties that uh, exist in getting into that same room and being able to view and review with uh, your teams the information that you used to do in one meeting place. We also would very much like to hear from you. I would encourage you to contact us directly at info at corbinsoft.com. You are welcome to email me directly as well. We would be very happy to give you a direct demonstration and discovery of, of Polarian and how it might fit within your, with your enterprise.
so so with that it is again my my great pleasure to um pass along the uh presentation torch to Yerji Valak, who's going to talk a little bit more about that very helpful technology of New Wired that helps me make sure that implementations flow better. Yerji. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, David, for uh, such a friendly introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone, again. My name is Yerji Valak. So, NewVard, what is NewVard? NewVard is a, it's a digital adoption solution. And uh, as, a, as a mission, we really have uh, the goal to reduce the distance between technology, uh, between software and us humans, users, uh, let's say employees in many, uh, let's say large enterprise organizations. And you may ask yourself, why do we actually speak today on this webinar? Uh, I fully agree with David that, let's say this, this bundle of Polarium and NuVart really let's see, accelerates the, the adoption of, of skeletal framework, uh, but there are actually really more hands-on and practical reasons that we want to mention today. The, the reason number one is the actual user acceptance. And uh, we should actually repeat that the, the people, the, the individuals uh, were stated in the, in, the, in the Agile Manifesto that are truly in, in the heart of in the center of any agile methodology. But what I think that people tend to forget about agile is how much is it about empirical decisions that a lot of the, let's say, the processes and methodologies that are, let's say, more, are standardized in any of the agile uh, methodologies about how uh, do you maintain data to help you do a better decisions. And when we speak about data-driven decisions, it's very essential to actually consider the data quality. And what I've learned, I mean, and uh, I have, uh, let's see, probably 20 years of experience in this industry, is that uh, the data quality is very much connected in uh, how much are the people, uh, let's say, connected to the tools they use. So the, 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 the less they actually uh, trust the technology, the, the less they consider the, the tool as a, as a, as a help, uh, the more you see that the, the data are actually not as good as uh, if, they, if they actually embrace the tools that should help them uh, through, the, through the process. And reason number three, uh, like it or not, the scale agile framework is a bit complex. Uh, there is a... There's a great quote from, from one, from, uh, let's say, journalist that for every complex problem, there is a solution that is easy, simple, but wrong. And the good thing about SAFE is that I don't think it's, 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 it's a wrong answer to many of the questions how to scale Agile uh, in, a, in, a, in a large scale. But in the same time, it actually really brings some complexity, which actually translate about trainings and learnings. We all know, I mean, that you can train the people on, on, on any methodology, on any tool, uh, but they forget. Uh, so then it comes a bit of frustration. So you need to retrain them again. Uh, and this can continue several times uh, in, in a sequence. And that's exactly, I mean, what, what uh, we believe that we can cover better with a so-called in-place, in-application guidance. Let me just really recap that uh, once again so if i open my my browser uh, so i'm in a in a polarion again and uh, that's the the, the polarion implementation of, of skeletal framework i can actually get the the understanding about the data just inside of the tool so you remember david was actually presenting uh, what is the skeletal framework project structure i can have a journey that actually helps me to get through this kind of the, the training once again directly in a tool. So it expa explains me what is the portfolio project, uh, what, where do I track the actual portfolio assets. I mean, there is something like a program. What is the program? There is something like a team. So I can, I can build the guidance directly in the tool. It can be that simple that it just explains me, let's see, what the project structure is, or it can actually dive deeper into the uh, actual project artifacts. 
So it tells me to click into, into here. Now I'm in the, in the portfolio project. It helps me to understand that I should expand this list to get actually the list of work item types. So you probably are getting the concept of this in place guidance. I can continue, but that's definitely not in the scope of, let's say, uh, my part. The reason number two, uh, why I think that uh, you've are uh, let's see the, uh, the 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 overall scalage of framework adoption is that again agile by its definition uh, calls for embracing a change again this is a principle behind the agile manifesto that at regular intervals the team reflects on how to become more effective so i mean you can adopt the the scalage of framework as it is uh, provided by by siemens but let's say uh, in, in, in a then an essential step, you should think about your own customizations or adjustments uh, to match your project reality. And the great thing about Polarion is that it allows this flexibility. So it's very easy to, uh, let's see, uh, start quickly if adopting the, the out of the box template, but benefit from the flexibility so you can adjust any type of the workflows, the artifacts, etc. And reason number three, and this was, uh, I was so happy to see it on the, on the slides from David, is that the adoption may take some time. So it's not uh, a task for a week or two to fully adopt the scalable framework. Uh, it's unrealistic. This is, a, this is a transition that usually happens over a couple of months, if not years. And uh, uh, this means that even this this type of the training and rollouts and adjustments to the processes may take a couple of the months or years. So if uh, you are supposed to actually adjust the processes, it is clear that the guidance itself cannot be provided by Scalage or Framework, uh, let's say organization, or Siemens as a provider of the, of the guidance. You need to be able to also adjust the guidance itself. So that's uh, the second part of my live demo today is that Newvart actually comes with a, with, a, with a unique studio to create such an embedded guidance without any coding, with zero coding skills. By the way, what I'm showing you for, for Newvart, uh, for, for Polarion, applies for any web-based application. So the Newvart doesn't work just as an add-on to Polarion, but it can also work as an as a, as a addition to the, uh, let's say Siemens Team Center Active Workspace or any other web-based uh, systems like Jira, Atlassian, whatever. So let me show you how to create this guide. So I will create a guide uh, to create an epic. Uh, and it's a fully visual interface. So I can just add a step. I select here, so I should click uh, on work items. Uh, I should click there. I want to position it on the right. I want a bit of spotlight here. Uh, the second step should be that uh, I click here on the on the epic icon. So click on on epic um, icon. Uh, I should again just click on that a spotlight. It's okay. Uh, I should fill in the title. Uh, fill in the title. The great thing is that you know. You don't need just to give instructions about how to use the tool, but also specific process-related instructions. So if you if you create an epic or the or the user story, you want to go uh, and give uh, let's see uh, guidance. What should be a title? So um, I I will skip that for now, and the last step will be probably to to save that. So click create. And again, if you want just to click here, put a spotlight here, I save that. We have created a guide with zero coding. I can actually play that uh, to show you that actually it works. I'm playing it in my staging environment, but you see that I am able to create such a guidance uh, by myself without any, any, any coding or anything like this. So that's the reason number two that let's say the, the, the embracing of a change requires you to adjust, uh, let's say the, uh, the, 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 the methodology. If you go back to, uh, to our chart here, 
this is the, 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 the aura here, that it's not only about initial training or about the fact that the people forget, but it's also about the fact that you need to, to change the things. You need to, uh, let's say, be ready that the, this change is uh, inevitable. The reason number three is that there are possibly other, let's say, digital adoptions platforms on the market, but why are the companies actually selecting Nuvart as a digital adoption solution, especially in combination uh, with uh, enterprise tools like Polarium? Uh, there, are, there are many reasons, but first, for example, is I mentioned how easy it is to create this guide, but in the same time, it has to be robust. You know that if you would learn more about Polarium, with every single new version of Polarion, the, the user interface from the, let's say, structural point of view is changing a bit. We have created a technology that I don't need to create as guidance for every uh, new release. Uh, it, it allows you the, the, the many different flexibility options for deployments, same as Polarion, we enable the on-premise installations. Control the content publishing. Many of our customers actually use NuVart to document standard operating procedures, which, by the way, in the medical market, it means that this standard operating procedures needs to be reviewed uh, by the four, uh, four eyes, and there is an, uh, an approval process around that. So we are, we are aware of these uh, regulations that applies also to the, uh, to the actual uh, guidance itself. It supports multi-application guidance. Many of Polarn customers actually adopt uh, let's see this ALM PLM type of solution where you may use different tools for software lifecycle management and some other tools for PLM tools, but there sometimes is a single process, a single use case, and you want to guide people the, uh, through the use case that maybe starts in Polarin and finish in Team Center. We also support multi language uh, guidance, so if you would need, you can actually translate the guidance into multiple languages. All of that is actually pretty transparent. Uh, uh, um, let's see, licensing model, and uh, you can try it really easily. So that's why uh, I was so excited about being invited for this webinar, because I can really see uh, this type of synergy uh, between, let's say, a tool like Polarion that supports the actual data and process, and a tool like Nuvart that brings this technology uh, more close to the users. Thank you, David, for uh, for inviting me for this webinar. Yeah, thank you very much, Yuji. And and you know what? I'll follow this up with kind of a commitment that we have at CorbinSoft. We simply will not be implementing Polarian without New Wired anymore, because of all of the advantages that uh, Yuji just mentioned. Um, it is going to help us in streamlining the training and adoption process of a new technology like Polarian to our new customers. So we really are looking forward to not just this being the first webinar, but uh, continued webinars uh, focusing more on, on the new wire technology as well. Uh, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining today. Um, in the interest of time, I will suspend any of the questions and answers. I'm looking carefully at one. I, I will I will sort of have this uh, this question. So uh, Steve Kennedy, um, and this is probably a good question for you, Yerji. Is it possible to turn this guidance on and off by user or by other group in Polarian? So may, maybe you can talk a little bit about um, the, the the method for uh, uh, using the extension inside in, inside the browser and how it could be a, a kind of a personal uh, a personal setting. Uh, yeah, thanks for 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 that. The, this is a very common question. I mean that uh, I mean who how do we target the guidance for specific people? Uh, so first, um, our experience is that if you believe that you know how to use the software, you may forget. So it's very important, I mean, that our guidance is not disruptive, so it can really stay there over time. You see that it is reflected by this help icon here uh, on the bottom corner, it can be actually adjusted. So one thing is that it shouldn't disrupt even the senior uh, users uh, from, from using the software, but that's one thing. The other thing is that, of course, there is an option to um, uh, how this is being deployed. It can be deployed via the browser extension, or it can be deployed into the, uh, into the technology itself via so-called JavaScript snippet. The question, can it be, uh, let's say, uh, automatically, uh, let's say, enabled? Uh, yes, we have 
tools like that, if I am a, a new user, uh, some of the introduction journey can be triggered automatically, uh, which happens only once. Uh, so once I am, uh, let's say, familiar with the technology, I'm not disrupted by this automated, uh, let's say, guides uh, anymore. If you all know that this, this might be frustrating if, if the guide appears over and over on the screen. So um, uh, there, are, there are ways how to enable it and disable it. Um, and but for for me personally, our experience is that it's better rather to 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 find a place for the guide that is really non uh, disruptive, uh, so the, any type of the user can search about the guidance because it's surprising how we all forget uh, the things that we have learned some some uh, years ago, uh, and you may actually miss the guidance exactly in the moment. Uh, when you thought that you everything you know everything, but you, you simply forget. So uh, my recommendation is uh, to rather find a place where it can stay there forever. Thank, thank you for that. I'll, I'll I'll add on one kind of Polarian technical note to that. Um, inside Polarian, there's a particular uh, uh, capability called Velocity, which is processed on the server. So when I write reports or pages in Polarian, it's possible for me to dynamically place that JavaScript content down uh, very much by individualized choices of who is the group targeted for that or who is the particular, you know, am I a user in the in the group that should be seeing this. I, I will say I think I agree with, uh, with Yuji, especially from the perspective that, that I'm taking where I, I want to speed up the initial use of the tool. I, I so far haven't thought to take new wired and and make it be always on for the most sophisticated users but but we do also think that um, we'll start to see some features and functions which are on the edge of different users uh, use cases so a, a, a user that is reviewing and approving documents most of the time in a tool like Polarian and looking at dashboards might not really be creating work items um, and, and so being able to have access to that simple instruction on how to create a work item on demand is very helpful. Similarly, if I was a software engineer, not spending too much time in the review and execution uh, of a document workflow, I might want to be able to engage that particular SOP as well. So that, that can be done. And we actually, I actually fiddled around with turning it on and turning it off by on demand by a user. And, and so I think there is an answer to there. Certainly when it's used in a, in a tool like Polarian where that kind of capability is, is, is built right into the underlying structure. Um, great question, great question. Okay, um, I, I'm gonna go ahead and call the time. We're a little bit over our time, so I thank everybody who, who's held on this long. And also, just to, as a quick reminder, we'll have, um, we'll, we'll have uh, this, um, uh, this recording online at, at uh, corbinsoft.com, and um, we're happy to hear from you via email or any follow-up questions as well. So thank you very much, have a nice day.